everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney. You're our Chirpa. And we are here together live. I'm so excited. Uh, we're going to be doing a still live class in three parts. This is part one. Going to be super beginner friendly in this part. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. Hello. Hello, he's helping. Hello. Somewhere, uh, somewhere my mic's going to work. Here it goes. Okay, there it is. <laughs> he is bringing uh, this live to you via his switcher, and he's going to be pointing the camera at the techniques that I'm demonstrating and making sure that the things I'm explaining and the products I'm talking about, you can see very clearly so you don't have questions about that at home. If you're here during the live, thank you for coming today. This is my first live back in a minute, so I'm super nervous about to be here. The pacing today is going to be chill and chiller <laughs> that's our goal chill and chiller chill and chiller i am starting with a traceable this is an image that you can transfer onto the canvas so that's something you can get in the description below and in fact if you check the description below i've listed all the materials i expect to be using in this project i will not be using all of them today so one of the things that i would love to before we get into the materials advise you is I'm going to be putting them out as I need them as you need them in the stream don't put them all out on your palette unless you have a product called a wet palette and if you've never heard of that that's a palette that you can mix paint on and then close up with the lid and it saves your paint and keeps it wet from painting session to painting session to painting session so you can put everything out if you want to if you have one of those but if not just follow along with what I do because it will use less of your overall paint I'm going to have my way of doing doing it and then I will often suggest a couple other ways you might do it if you had different stuff because I recognize we don't always come to every painting class with everything exactly the same because we're not carbon copies of each other and even when I give you a material list factors like budget location all kinds of things can change the decisions that you have to make as an artist and we want to make sure that we're present to that reality so that you're having a great time painting and I'm having a great time painting if you're here during the live and you have a question be sure and put it all in caps we have very special people we call moderators but they're really butterflies and the reason we call them butterflies is they're hosts they're not art cops they're not here to boot people or do that we rarely ever have a troll so really these are just people who painted one of the many thousands of classes that I've taught and they just know where the links are and how to help you and sometimes they know the answer to your questions because they've just been here a while. So they're super friendly, kind people. In fact, you're going to find everybody here is very friendly and very kind. It's one of the nice things about this community. Do you think you're ready to hop in and go over materials, John? In just a second, I will be. Well, before we go on, I just got our uh, our little... Uh, thing to buffer reset. We had a oh. we had a little moment there, but in it should be all resetting here. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's all. It's one of those things where every once in a while, when we first do this, um, the 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 buffering will start at the beginning of the channel. It acts real weird, and then like right now, the buffer cue is emptying out. So, and it shows that we have a smooth signal. So here in just a second, I imagine that it'll all be caught back up. And if you missed anything there while we were uh, while it was going. At the, at the very beginning it should be uh, you can rewind and see it yeah and it'll be there during the replay that's an, a thing I didn't used to know about the buffering or when the signal was like weird is that uh, YouTube has a thing where this video sort of fixes itself now not in the beginning days when we were live if our sound was weird in the beginning days when we were live it's live today it's weird today mm -hmm. like it was done one is done and that's how it is but now it kind of self seals or comes back and corrects those buffering issues and so your replay viewing is clear viewing now my recommendation is if you're here for the live um, watch this and chat with everybody and you can go ahead and work along live but don't worry about keeping up because the replay will be here after and remember we're being chill and chiller mm -hmm. right and it is not chill to try to keep up with somebody that you feel is painting faster than you so make sure you're keeping your own personal painting experience very mellow and fun and enjoyable all right materials okay let's see here we got some materials all right and i'll make you small and i'll be small i'll be mini me mini me <laughs> As we need the reference more and more and more, we will change that position and me in relationship to the reference. But right now, we're just doing the underpainting in the beginning of the painting. Now, you'll see a line drawing on my 11 by 14 canvas, and this is taped down. I'm going to show you real quick what I did on the back side of it. On the back side of it, 
I rubbed it with a pencil. Remember doing that in school when you rub something with a pencil? You rub the back side of a pencil and you go over all the little lines and then you tape it down in several places and that way we can transfer the image onto the canvas. Now you could use serral paper for this, but I think um, for this type of still life, the graphite's actually our friend. I know that's not normally our friend, but here, because of how we're going to seal it in, it's definitely going to be our friend. I have an 11 by 14. If you have trouble printing out a tiled image, that's where you take a image and get it on two pieces of paper that will line up from your printer. Like you don't have like a lot of printer skills and uh, technology is not your friend. What you do is you just have it fill the page on a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and you just paint it on a nine by 12 canvas. Um, if you'd like to try to tile this like I have this tiled here and you need a free tool because your printer doesn't do that, there is a um, free online website called Rasturbator. Uh, hopefully the mods, oh, Heather C. Hopefully the mods can get that link to you. Um, it's a tool we've used for like, I don't know, almost 10 years. It's and it's free and it's wonderful and it's online cool. and maybe you're confident to freehand, but we're not going to worry about freehanding skills here. We're doing still life the very chill way, which is using a traceable to get it on to the canvas. So how you do that is once you have it rubbed on the back, you need to find a pencil. Oh, there's a good one, right? You just go over all of your lines and you would press down with the pencil. So you're going to want a pencil for that. So that's what's here. On my palette, I have the glazing medium that I mentioned in previous posts. I have the satin finish. You could have gloss. Um, the reason I have the satin is because the gloss gets so shiny that the cameras can't see the painting anymore. Mm. And that's not enjoyable for you. So even though I really like the gloss quite a lot because it enriches the colors, I use the satin so you can see it at home. Both are equally good products. Thank you, Anne. Oh my goodness, Ann Cahill, thank you so much. And I also want to say I see Tammy Pickett is letting us know that it's good now and there's no buffering. So thank you, Tammy. I appreciate that. So that's what this milky substance is right here. And I have burnt sienna on my palette. On occasion, you'll see me use this. This is just water in a mister bottle. And I might mist my paint so it doesn't dry out. I've got a bucket of water to the side right here so I can work with my brush and I will be starting out when I do paint with a nice round today. This is a number six Raphael sepia. So that's kind of the beginning materials we're going to be using. Mm. Can we throw up a step one? We can. I have to go to that button. Okay. Where's the button? There's a button. Step one. See like a button. So in step one, you would have looked down into the description and seen the link to the traceable and you would go to the website and you would get that to print that out or download that digital file. And either you're going to go with it and just do it on a 9x12 because you don't want to be aggravated. But if you're like, no, I need a bigger painting for my kitchen, then you're going to want to hop over to a tool like Rasturbator to make it bigger so you can tile that up or use the tiling feature on your surface. And then what you want to do is print that out, lay that out, affix it to your canvas after rubbing pencil lead on the back right this is just pencil lead rubbed on the back and you can see i had printed this on two sides even and i just put this together it was it was fine it didn't interfere with me at all as soon as you have it done like that and remember you're not trying to keep up with me live because i have to prepare a couple of things before the show because you don't want to see me searching online for thing messing with my printer messing again with my printer <laughs> taping everything oh Antoinette is uh joined custom emojis for chat uh, what that is is that is a uh, youtube has a membership thing and if you have that if you have the custom emojis you're part of emoji club and you get fun goofy emojis that you can use in the live chat over here on my channel. They don't transfer to other channels or any of that. And unfortunately, there's no way for me to hook these up with Patreon. Um, but if you want to support the channel, you can go over to Patreon. We just had a really cool oil pastel class that everybody is really digging. Oh, that was so good. If, if you have oil class. pastels and you're like, I don't know how to make these things go, 
we just dropped the replay video and it's like the quintessential though i'll probably make one of these for the main youtube channel at some point now that i've gotten it together with my patrons because my patrons usually help me in the live classes over there we do zoom interactive classes they usually help me kind of figure out some of the more complicated stuff and work out the kinks now this fancy pencil is a hp pencil it's the exact kind you had in school it just has a it has a good atama on it because it's cute and how i get this transferred on there is i put on glasses because being able to see what i'm doing makes everything so much better and I'm going to go in and you trace over the lines that are here. You're tracing? Yeah. I thought that was a art police no-no. Well, sometimes artists will tell you that this is cheating, but then they forget that all the great masters used to do a technique called cartooning, which is this technique. You don't get the drawings up on the Sistine Chapel your first try freehand. <laughs> you uh, do that on a sheet of paper. You, you mean, work all that out. He and wasn't then, just laying on his back with a piece of chalk, just drawn on the surface, just winging not it. just He was just laying on his back, millying. and there was chalk involved, but the cartoons were a way for him to work out his renderings on less expensive media like paper and be able to use them again repeatedly what? and he um he actually was one, one of pine no he didn't just no. just like i can no. do this one just go no girl with the pearl ing or earring was projection if you don't want to use this method you could use an app like artist eye and it will help you through your phone projected onto the canvas that's also not cheating because girl with the pearl earring a uh -huh. lot of times artists work very 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 hard on their rendering skills and when they see other artists using these techniques, they feel frustrated and they and they call it cheating, but it's not. It's just a technique. I don't I don't know what to tell them. Though I do admire freehanding and if you want to practice drawing yours out, what you would do is you would just do that on an eleven by fourteen sheet of paper and do the same method to transfer it on. You just mm -hmm. would have freehanded it. Right? When I do my own art, I freehand my stuff out on paper and then I use transfer papers to get it onto my canvas because I don't want to be all sketchy 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 on my canvas and we just go over these lines now I did put my center lines on my leaves I added these as I'm going even though I think I'm going to be painting over them pretty early on I just thought you might want to have them added in so I went ahead and added them in with my pencil so just drawing those in if you don't have those on the printout and again you go to the link in the description to get the traceable and if you're not sure what that is it's it's a if you go there it'll be like show more and you open that up and you'll be like oh my god this woman wrote a book why she have so many words here <laughs> that's because i actually don't use my description for keyword stuffing or hashtag stuffing or all that discovery stuff that other creators do it's links and information that you need as a student <laughs> i have always done that with my descriptions um, I've never really been a keyword stuffing kind of person. Now, the nice thing about still lives is they teach us wonderful skills like lighting and how form works and how color and value create art. And I really, really like them as a way of learning how to paint. Fun tip on my straight lines. I like to use a tool called the T-square. Even, even though I have the traceable, I might use my T-square to get the line set in. See how I'm doing? And I will be doing this more than one time with my, my ruler. And this is just a very handy one. They should not cost a lot of money when they're in the plastic like this. They only get expensive when you get them in metal. Though I will let you know the metal ones are square and much better even than these these ones. The metal ones are like serious business. They use them in drafting. They're quite nice. I have a metal one somewhere. I could defend my home with it. It's quite sharp and big. Right? And then you come through here and you trace over every single little grape. Now the kind of slow part of this beginning of the painting that we're doing here is that we're going to do this twice we're going to do this once with the pencil and once with the paint and then we're going to glaze over and what that's going to do is preserve the drawing through the painting process so you don't lose so much of the traceable when you start to paint the image in sometimes in the old and old in the before times I would just be like, there's some grapes here with some paint, and then we would just freehand them in. But today is not that day. Today is the day where we draw all of our little grapes. 
So we do that, and then when we have that all done, and that could take you however long it takes you, it doesn't matter, there's no speed component of that. I like to untape carefully, just in case I missed a spot, and I need to go over anything again. And the tape I use is artist tape. Oh, that one's not wanting to come up. There you go. Artist tape helps. It's a it low tack uh, tape. Yeah, so it doesn't pull up the paper as it goes. See, it's a very, very light. Light, 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 light. Light, 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 light. We don't want it to be, like, you can't even see it, can you? Yeah. This is why sometimes I don't go through this this part of the demo, like making you sit there through 20 minutes of tracing, because you're like, not even going to get to see what I did. You barely, barely, barely. And that's why we spend the time putting it in carefully with our paint later. It's, you can see the back of the whole thing where I have the reverse of it, because I printed it on two sides accidentally. But it's still tiled, so I was like, you're okay. The center, I've just joined up with clear artist tape right here. Now, the nice thing about this is if you love this, once you've made this, and you want to do this painting again as a gift, if you keep this like it is, you can use this over and over and over again, which is why Michelangelo did it. Those figures weren't just used on the Sistine Chapel. They were used in other paintings. Stuff, stuff had a life, and then it had a re-life, and then it had another re-life. Because, you know, artists were nothing if not frugal and thrifty. Do we have the next step up? I'm ready for the next step. Step two. I have burnt sienna here in my glazing medium. I'm going to get my round brush I mentioned earlier. This is the number six sepia. And I'm going to load up this paint on my brush. And do the very monotonous job of painting in all of these little lines with paint. This starts to make sense once we glaze it, and then you're like, oh. So we're kind of doing a combo between a oil technique called grisaille and a immediate painting technique called all promo. We're going to be doing kind of both of those in this. Normally, I just go wet into wet. We just go at it, and we're like, there's grapes, there's grapes, there's grapes, there's grapes. But right now... My brain is not trustable to be like, it might get in the middle of this and go, I don't know what these circles were. And I've found that that's going on right now. So we're just going to go over it very carefully. We're just going to take our time. You can see also it's giving me a chance to practice my um, brush stroke here that I'm going to be using on my little grapes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a little grape kind of dangling down here. Now, where I have this line here, remember I told you to get that ruler back out again? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to trust my freehanding skills. My freehanding skills are weird right now. I'm going to use a ruler. I'm only using the glazing medium to improve flow. I'm just going over that. And then once I've done that, I have a nice straight line. I wipe off my ruler. And I'll use it to get this straight line. I mean, maybe I'll freehand in this corner. I'm not too stressed about that. And I'll go ahead and use it for over here as well. Gotta line up my table line. See, so I'm not asking myself to draw straight lines even. Mm -hmm. Ruler isn't cheating either, it's just a tool. And then loading back up on the toe. Now we're gonna be doing grapes for a minute. So if we have a question. <laughs> uh, we're gonna be doing a few grapes, eh? This is what we're doing for a minute. This is like, if this were like a ASMR, this would be really good. But it's not ASMR. This is teaching. So I will talk too much to ever get into the so, ASMR algorithm. So what what part of, of the lands did you find yourself living in now? So 
Um, we've got to make a video about this at some point because so much stuff happened to us. We were going to immigrate to Ireland and we went through the whole process and we did actually at one point have a house to move into for rent and a car to move into for rent, obviously. And we did get our visa. Our but, visa was finally approved. Yeah. But unfortunately, we were already settled in Ann Arbor, Michigan by the time all of that came through. Because they have a lot of stuff going on over in Ireland right now. I'm really appreciative, though, to everybody in Ireland who helped us get everything. And, you know, I'm not at all like, oh, it took too long or any of those feelings. I recognize everything that was going on that was slowing all of that process down as being really valid and about human beings. And I love that about Ireland. But once we got to Ann Arbor, we just fell in love. Mm -hmm. The kids fell in love with the school. They made best friends. They got in all the clubs, like all the clubs. <laughs> and their grades were really good and everything was really good. And then we had to ask ourselves, as much as we want to go, is it responsible to uproot them again? Right. To make this move. And we realized... It wasn't the right choice for us. It wasn't the right choice for them anymore. And the right choice was to stay here in Ann Arbor. If you've never been to Ann Arbor, oh my gosh, you must come. It's like a little pocket of paradise. Yeah. I love it so much. It's actually been suggested to me for years by the community. Like I've been told by my community for years, you should come to Ann Arbor. You will love it. And I've been like, Michigan, Michigan, at the top of the like, the top of the thing, the one everyone says is the hand. Detroit. The, yeah, like you know, near Detroit. Like I, I like the Blues Brothers. John like, loves the yeah, Blues Brothers. But I, like, I love the movie Doctor Detroit. I thought that was a crazy movie from the eighties too. <laughs> right, and but once we came here, we were just like, and we like right the week we came here, we had a power outage. And because of that, we had we got to meet all of our neighbors, mm -hmm. and they were like the best neighbors ever. And after having had the worst neighbors ever in the history of bad neighbors, and the worst roommate ever in the history of bad roommates, we were just like so shocked at the kindness of people. Yeah, and just their just their. I don't know. Like if you're from the area, you're like, yeah, that's how we all are. Well, it was a shock to us. Yeah. <laughs> That's really nice. Because that was not our experience. And it's really funny because my mom's um, husband came from a little town at the, I'm going to be so cool, at the other end of the hand. We're over here. He came down from Kissimmee. And um, I didn't realize what he gave up to be with my mom, but he gave up a lot to be with my mom because this place is just pretty wonderful. Yeah, they got a winter. They're not kidding when it snows. Snow jail is a real jail and you can end <laughs> up in it. Um but, you know, and I just bought a better coat and we're really loving it. And I I don't think I would have had the health care I needed. Like I, I, have, I was taken care of so well at the University of Michigan Hospital when I needed it. Yeah, it was really like, nice. Like so well. And I, I don't know I would have gotten that care anywhere else. And I feel like they saved my life. That's my feeling anyways, hmm. that they saved my life. You can see my lines were really light. So coming through and getting these darker lines in is really, really helpful. Um, later on, as you become more confident, as you do more and more two hoot and three hoot paintings, eventually what you do is you just paint the shape of the grapes and then you find their details as you're painting it and you paint it more immediately. But when you're really, really new to still lives, it's good to actually slow down and capture the details. Do we have any other questions in the millions of grapes? Hmm. Uh, will your paintings stick together after you varnish them? If you put them up, if you stack them? Yes. Mm. So use a If you stack them, yeah. If you stack them face to face, if you take any acrylic painting and you store those two acrylic paintings, painting side to painting side, uh, if you have, even if you have varnish on there, eventually they will merge and become one painting. It'll be like, you remember that old movie, The Fly? Huh. It'll be like somebody sent them through the fly transporter and they moosh together or any transporter yeah. accident you've ever seen on star trek right really quite serious uh, yeah and i can't really stress how well the kids are doing just like the kids are so happy so so happy wow i can't believe i'm almost through the grapes i really was like worried it would take all day but it's not taking all day
checking my sketch and making sure that I have the grapes that I think that I have. I believe I have the grapes I'm supposed to have. I'm going to move on to the apple now. Mm. So I'm just keeping the lines that are the structure of the object. The structure. Right? These are these outer lines, the outer edge of the leaf and the outer edge of the apple and this outer edge of the object are called contour lines. And so we're just making sure we have our right contour lines. All the contour lines. Oh, uh, Catherine's saying you can go to the uh, Detroit Institute of Art. Yes, I hear that that Detroit, not Detroit, Detroit Institute of Art. Yeah, I hear the museums are must-see and that the art scene is a must-do. And I have to say, like, even here over in this area, the art scene is incredible. It's an incredible mm -hmm. art. I'd like, this is a friendly to artist location. If you're an artist, you'll be like, I get it. And I love how everybody here is like, what concert did, you know, everybody knows everybody by the concerts that they went to, which is kind of a neat thing to see in an area. They take their football a little seriously, but I did that time in Texas, so I'm familiar with that. The nice little tangle of apple stems. Mm -hmm. So today we're just going to go for a little bit until, uh, like, just, just the amount of time that my... Uh, I can do and then we're gonna meet back again on Thursday 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 we'll be adding color to your surface well we might add a little color because we might get the underpainting and everything and we're just gonna go and we're gonna paint for a certain amount of time what I found is when I started coming back to painting I did a bunch of test paintings and I did this I don't know why I chose to do this one painting, but I did this really <laughs> technical painting like, that was like, I'm having a really hard time remembering how to paint and I'm having a real hard time with everything in my recovery. And what I'm going to do is just paint an original painting. It's super challenging. That'll help. And I just did it in segments. And when I first started, I could only paint for like 30 minutes. But then as I painted, the, the segments got longer and I've been painting live a little bit with the patrons. And we found that I'm pretty good for about an hour. Before it really starts to get get to me get to be overwhelming and I'm just gonna respect that that boundary that my mind and body has set because hmm. it's okay to respect those boundaries um, Bella I know I can get reference photo for traceables why is there not a color photo included just wondering thank you because you have to pay for your license to Shutterstock if you want this photo I had to pay for my license but they don't grant me the rights to grant you the rights mm. So it's on the video page. If you need to go look at it, it's over there. But I can't give you those rights to it. But I, what I do is I go back through and give you the finished painting to use as a reference. Right. And you can have that. We can all, we can use this photo as a reference, but we can't give you that photo for you to reuse because we don't have the rights to yeah, do that. Yeah, they, they get angry and they write us letters. So it's complicated. We can use it for reference, but not use it for like reproductive use. Or, or but if like you're wondering if you wanted to go get a membership and do that yeah, yourself, you I got it over on Shutterstock and I'm never offended if you guys want to do that. I just don't want to add an extra expense to your time. Yeah, we just can't extend that right to you because we don't own the original. And the photographer always deserves to be paid. Yes. That's like a rule, I think. Now, for the next part, I definitely want to dry this thoroughly. Thoroughly dry. So I'm going to take my hair dryer and I'm going to go over this. Um, sometimes people will talk to you about uh, heat and how it impacts your paint. But I'll just tell you before I go. On less expensive paint, like the craft bottle paints or paints that are, you know, you get 72 in a set, you know, the more economical paints. Sometimes what happens when you use heat on the surface, it takes a thing that paint is going to do called color shift. And that's where it lightens or darkens depending on the paint. Watercolor lightens, acrylic darkens, and it can darken up on you. And heat can, and some brands, not all brands, but some brands of paint make that even worse. I think it's pretty extreme on apple, but apple barrel paint, in my opinion. It really darkens, but it's really, even golden 
artist colors, which are perfect paints, still have some color shift in it. So that's what's going on. Uh, and if, if you want to come see me here in Ann Arbor, I'm having an art retreat in a few months. Hmm. And that's going to be a lot of fun. And there's information about that on the website in fabulous Ann Arbor. All right, let's try this. You try. And I will sit. John will chat with you. Yeah. So while, while that's going on, I have buttons over here. I have all these buttons to push. I have to hide my mic because it gets all wonkety. I think that if I come over here and go doop doop doop, doop. Hi, I'm supposed to say hi to Mary Ann from Norway. Hi, Mary Ann. Oh, uh, yeah, Mary Mary Ann from Norway. That's pretty cool. And so, if you're just joining us, we have a we're going to go on to our next step. Sometimes we get I try to make sure that the ad insertion goes here at the hair drying break. Um, man, that's some lousy, noisy hair drying. But good to see everybody here. I can't wait for the retreat either. Hopefully, we'll see. Are you going to be there, Catherine? I'm not. I haven't seen all of the list of folks that are going to be there. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, no, we are we are not in Texas anymore. We um, we went north, and uh, you know Texas is a uh, we, we we have family there, so occasionally we go back and stop over. But uh, it's really too warm, um, and uh, I just. I can I like the I like the different seasons having snow spring summer fall winter all four of those unique seasons are very enjoyable and Michigan is uh, I think one of uh, America's great uh, great treasures it's um, really got some amazing landscapes some amazing people the geography the just everything here is uh, it's really really quite nice uh, unexpectedly so. Yeah. Are you ready for a new step? Yeah, I am. A step three. Step three will be fun for you and me. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to get into my glazing medium. But before I get into my glazing medium, I want to just show you real quick. If you don't have glazing medium, um, what you're going to do is you're going to take a brush with maybe just a little more water on it and thin your paint a little bit. I'll come up and do it up here on the leaf. And you're going to paint a thin glaze. over your leaf now i'm going to do, do this using glazing medium because that's even more stable than using water and if you're using water you have to really allow your painting to dry or it will have trouble with what's called binding where the acrylic polymer binds to the acrylic polymer that's already on the pre-gessoed canvas so i'm going to use a one inch oval mop this is one of my very favorite brushes on the planet if you're like what brushes should i have to paint with you this is one of the brushes i would highly recommend having to paint with me and if you've been having any trouble with it do you guys remember that video i made how much water where it talks about how to control the water and control the behavior of these brushes i'm going to go ahead and load up with glazing medium into the brush you can see it's quite thirsty it soaks it all up and i'm going to grab just a little bit of my brown And I'm going to go over everything with a little bit of brown paint. Now, brown is pretty transparent on a good day. So that's why I picked it. And because there's a lot of it in the background. And it's the right color harmony for the background colors that we're going to be doing. And you can see that what this is doing is toning the entire canvas from white to brown. It's also stabilizing our line drawing here. If I feel like I got too much color, I just put some more glazing medium and I go over it. But all that's supposed to happen is that my lines are stable and you can see them through the color that I'm laying down. This is a very traditional method for still life. Um, I used to have to do a lot of still lifes when I uh, was younger and I worked in the studio. And the reason for that is, is that if you're a working artist, if you're a working artist here and you're like, how can I 
keep making money. I'm having a really hard time. My two cents is a side hustle in still lifes because they're very relatable for people and they always sell and then pets, but avoid doing people at all costs unless you're really, really good at it. Doing portraiture, very stressful gig. Painting pets, very enjoyable gig. <laughs> And I mean, people will have all, any pet, like painted fish, dogs, cats. It's a very nice way to make a little extra money on the side if you're needing some for your art supplies. Not that you came here to know that. I'm just sharing that bit of experience and information for you. I've had to do that a couple times in my life where we were a little bit needing some cash. And that has always helped us, has it not? What was that? Uh, where I do a side hustle doing oh, yeah. um, still lifes, painting still lifes, mm -hmm. or uh, painting pets. I'm also answering questions here inside. Oh, wonderful. That's Thank right. you for answering questions, John. You're just so wonderful to do that. Now, when I draw this canvas again, it's going to take me a second to dry it because the downside to gloss glazing liquid like this, this product is two things. This slows down and extends the acrylic color. So when it says extends the acrylic color, that's the glazing part of it. In other words, you can this transparent tint of color over everything. But the slow drying is usually a whole nother product that you have to buy that lets you blend the colors. So on the occasion you use it for glaze, you might have to spend a little more time with the hair dryer to get it to set. And also another thing you might not know if you're new to acrylics and you're having trouble with the drying time and the acrylics being too fast, they make a line of acrylics in Golden Artist Colors does called Open Acrylics, and they have a they use that as their acrylic polymer, and so it slows down the drying time of the paint sometimes as like hours. So it gives you more of an oil-like painting experience. This also, prepping the canvas like this, it, it creates a smoother experience for the paint to stick and go over everything. So that's another nice reason that it's good to tone your canvas ahead of time. The toning will make a difference in the richness of the color. And you can always go around the canvas, the edges if you want, but you don't have to. That's not required. I would always make sure that you round the turn here so that if you frame, the white of the canvas is not showing. All right. Tony is like, I need that, I need, oh, that brush. <laughs> I need to watch that one again. <laughs> yeah, sometimes this brush can be a little challenging. And the reason is because it pulls a lot of water into it. And you have to use a handy dandy, this is always in my lap. A handy dandy paint rag is always in my lap because it lets me squeeze out paint. It lets me squeeze out water. It lets me control what's going on with my brush. And, you know, I really like it. You don't have to wash them or anything. You can, though, weirdly. All right. I feel like it's fairly smoothly on here. I'm going to say that's good. I'm going to do an ample rinse of this brush, getting the paint out of the brush. Um, if ever you leave too much paint in your brush and it dries, remember you can soak your brush in 91% rubbing alcohol and get the paint out of it even if it's dried acrylic or dried glazing medium. It will break down the polymers in the paint. And then if you wash with warmer water and soap, you can work it the rest of the way out. I'm going to dry again with my hair dryer for an overtly long amount of time. All right, we can do that. Uh, oh, Lindsay's like, how is it in Michigan? It's a little chilly in Louisiana. I was just saying. Oh, Lindsay, it's so much more chilly here in Michigan. Louisiana is like on its coldest days, like well, their spring weather, I there, think. I, there's some interesting weather that's going on with you guys. So I, I, I have seen you guys at the cold jet stream down there. It's rough. What I would say about Michigan is that it does, you know, having lived most of, I grew up in Houston, Texas. And uh, I do believe that it has the same latitude as Cairo, but with 98% humidity. So, you know, it's got some unique properties being in the Gulf Coast. It's always hot and wet and raining. And, uh, you know, it's just not to say there aren't, aren't nice days and things, but for the most part, my experience was it was too hot outside to do anything because you would just sweat and sweat and sweat and nothing would happen. And it would just sort of ruin everything. Now, here when I got to Michigan, I found that even when it's super cold outside, you still go outside and walk around. And, like, it's nice. And, I mean, it's... Uh, the big difference I found 
is that I can go outside and work and live and enjoy Michigan even when it's cold. But in Houston, if it was hot outside, you just you just couldn't go out, and it was just the end. So uh, I do get to enjoy being outside a lot more here, and the kids are constantly outside. Uh, it's I, I I say it's like living in Mayberry or um, one of these I you know I idyllic uh, sort of 50s um, TV show type of neighborhoods because the kids we, we, we have a little park up the street and the kids ride their bike and they they can walk to school and it's just magic. like leave it to beaver it's crazy yeah. it's like yeah. they do they ride their bike like all kinds of places sorry that just excited me when that happened when i was like the kids are riding a bike the elizabeth a- asks a really good question oh, i want to answer elizabeth's question Before thank you for asking okay. so if uh and and i'll elizabeth, go over the I'm colors that i'm this. putting out on the next step i'm going to broaden this out because i know it applies uh overall but I, but elizabeth is is having is is curious um because she, should she is it worth getting golden fluid paints if i'm using lesser lesser quality paints elsewhere So how I mean, and when do we upgrade? Like try the white, right? That's the color you use most in all of your paintings. And if your stuff is drying on you too quickly, a trick that you can do, and this was actually suggested to me by Mark Golden himself, is trying to use the Golden's um, uh, open white. And, and it definitely does slow down and improve the blendability and it's really an interesting thing and then you can kind of see if you like the paint or if you feel like it's some people feel like it's too sticky i haven't had that experience but i've in my group i have a facebook group with like fifty thousand painters who paint with me and i totally let you guys share your art experience with art materials that way you know no relationship i have with any paint company is ever going to be more important than the experience that you're currently having with the paint and you guys tell each other how it's going all the time and sometimes i will see somebody be like they feel like it's sticky at a stage i haven't had the sticky experience but that is the feedback I got. My personal experience is it slowed down the drying time just enough for me to get blending in. And that's what got me into the glazing liquid. Now, if you have less quality paints and you want to do this, this is fantastic. And and honestly, there is Donna Dewberry has the floating medium, which is a little a bit of a cousin of this. So this will improve those uh, decorative painting techniques because it improves the flow and brushability. I, I don't work for this company. Um, they, like, I'm not invited to the Christmas party. I just really want you to understand my relationship as I gush here is about the product. And while I like the people and I like that it's employee owned and I think they're all really cool, my relationship is that I just like the product. That, in fact, how my mom got in it, I gave it as a Christmas gift or birthday gift. What, I don't remember which it was. I gave it as like an actual present to my mom, who's also an artist, and got her completely <laughs> yep. converted. <laughs> so that's how serious I am about liking it. I really like it. It's made yeah. my experience much better. But again, you can always come into the group over on Facebook and be like, what do you all think of this product? And you will get a hundred answers of beginning artists just like you and what their experience was. And that's also pretty valuable. Okay. I'm going to grab a three quarter inch angle. You could do an inch angle. You could do a half inch angle. I just like an angle brush and I have put out yellow ochre in Mars black. And what we're about to do here is what's called blocking in an underpainting. An underpainting are the colors and values that you would put in a painting so that when you start building in your middle values and your hues and everything, you have the correct kind of like almost like roadmap to the final work. So I'm taking Mars Black and Burnt Sienna, maybe a little more chocolate and a little less deep space. And we're going to paint in the side of the wood. I just follow this along. I can always reset this line if it gets away from me. And the other thing to remember is it's wood, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I like using an angle brush because I can work in. See, I can get around the grapes. You surround the grapes. I can go around the grapes very, very easily. Very, very easily. 
This isn't my tidiest painting. This again is just an underpainting. I used to have to do this work in the studio all the time on 48 by 60 canvases. This is literally what I had to do over and over and over again. It was kind of like a Karate Kid kind of scenario huh. of uh, of art. But it did start, really help me begin to see fundamentally my values and how those impact the finished painting. Mm. And that's always worthwhile. So I'm just painting the side bar here with this dark color. I can come in and, you know, get a little dark color through the grapes because, you know, shadow. Just working in there. Now I'm going to rinse out. And I'm going to come here with my yellow ochre and my burnt sienna. And there's a little Mars black in there from earlier. And I'm going to paint the top of the table with this color. This is going to give me a very nice blocking in underpainting. I run my brush along the edge with the short end of the brush first and the long end of the brush trailing behind. Whenever you're doing an angle brush, you want the stroke to lead with the short and end with the long. Unless you're just working the toe, which is this part right here. That's like, you'll see me get in like fussy. That's when I go in with the toe. I don't go in with the toe unless I'm, I'm being fussy with my painting. And the nice thing about it being painted, you'll see, even if I go over the grape a little bit, you don't lose the sketch. One of the things that's hard when you're really new to painting in acrylic is, and one of the things you'll realize when people are like, oh, it's cheating to trace, is you're like, yeah, but the traceable's gone like in two seconds. Where did it go? All my lines are gone, and I needed those lines. I was using those lines to know what the heck was going on, and they're gone. And that's why I'm always like, it... It, it's not at all cheating, but this holds the lines a little bit longer into the painting. There's a painting technique called grisaille, where you paint the entire painting first in light and dark values. If you're a pencil artist, this technique is your jam, and you want to like go watch all the videos on it. Um, and it lets you sort of hold the whole sketch in, and then you glaze over it with color like to get the values. I have a fun old lesson of a grisaille, and there's a bunch of good information out there now on it. A lot of good artists. Weirdly, my favorite was Montmartre Art, but I don't know where that channel went. It kind of vanished. In the, I don't know where, what they do with YouTube channels. I assume they're still there somewhere. Chugging somewhere. along. Somewhere. Somewhere out there. All right, look at that. So that's that part of the underpainting of that. Let's go ahead and I'm going to add some more color to the palette. So let's call this a step. Okay. We go on to the next. And I'm going to come in and add a little green. You can see why I'm like, a wet palette is your friend. A little green. And I may go ahead and get my giant tube of white paint. It's really nice, isn't it? It's like all the white I will ever want. But when you squeeze from the back, sometimes it comes out real fast. I actually um, prefer sometimes little tubes, but sometimes you can't find the little tubes. Now I may size down on my angle and the reason I might size down on my angle is to get into like um, tight spaces and I may add in um, a blending brush to this as well as we go through but I'm going to begin with my same angle that I did the table in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of my burnt sienna in my Thalo green. This is Thalo green and this is titanium white. Now mix these together into a deep forest green. 
I'm going to come over here and paint this this dark, dark, dark green. Now we're going to do some fun stuff with the blends later, but right now what we're just trying to do is create the how dark it is. Because the only way to have a green on green area where the leaves are green and the background is green is to create a value difference between these leaves and that background. You want that background to be dark and then these leaves to be brighter and then we'll use the edge light of it to really pop them out. But this is the good beginning of that. Do we have any questions? That I've missed. Let's go over here and see. Lots of people looking forward to the retreat. I'm so glad. I'm really looking forward to this retreat. I really am. And you can find information on the retreat on our website if you go there, trsherpa.com. And I think it's under events. And it just occurred to me, if this is your first time in a live art class like this, that you might not know what that word means. And that would not be weird. Um, in art they have a concept called an art retreat where you go to a location and they take care of you completely in every way. And all you have to think about is painting. We've taken that to the next level. Mm -hmm. We have, we make it fun. We've got, we've got like night events, like the pajama glamour and we art together. We art so much that you're like, you, you come away going, I almost arted too much. As if that's a thing that could happen, but sometimes, you know, we feel like it could happen. We, we, we have realized that we sometimes need to have midday siestas because you art so much. You, so you, you just really breaks. eat with us and art with us and eat with us and art with us and eat with us and art with yeah, us. Yeah, like when you go home, you're like, I don't want to eat or paint for a week because I've had too much. Which is exactly the feeling I want you to have. Yes. Now, as I'm coming out here, it's okay with me if this paint color begins to lighten. And I might go ahead and gla grab some glazing medium and a little bit of my yellow ochre, even a smidge of my white, so that around my grapes the color is just a little bit lighter. And I'll brush that back. So you can see I'm using that to create that lighter value. Now I'll be coming back with a blending brush to create what's called the bokeh or the out of focus effect that you see in the reference because I like it and I want to duplicate that here. But this is just an easy way to start to get there. If you ever did um, let there be light any of those paintings with me, which were complicated like three, four hour painting sessions, we really, really gone into green on green on green on green on green. Mm. On green. On green. I'm adding a little bit more yellow ochre. We want to really carry this down the whole line of the grapes. Because we want there to be a value difference, right? So that our grapes really show their darkness. If like I have it dark green down here and I have it dark purple down here, if you take all the color away, you won't really see the grapes and the color. And if all you're relying on is the color of your vet, your painting to make an object seem separate from another object, mm -hmm. it will never quite read right. Right. And it will always kind of bug your eye a little bit. So we're using this technique to get away with doing more. If I want to be like kind of like tricky, I can glaze a little bit and come around the grapes in my table and it's okay if it overlays some because the glaze is transparent and will let me do that. Just going along. And again the two ways we can glaze is with water or with gla a medium like glazing medium. Now again you really if you use water you really need to allow it to dry or when you come back with this second layer here, it's it's gonna it's gonna lift up on you or unbind. Now the trick I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my light color back up into my dark color for a second with my glazing medium, and then I'm gonna come back with dark color through. Cause it's easier to darken and a little harder to lighten when you're painting. Yeah, it is. 
Wool coming around. I know I'm going to be darkening that up in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and put some green through here. I'm going to let you know right now that there's a friendly little wheel bug in the room and I am afraid of bugs. So if I scream, I'm okay. <laughs> Nothing has gone wrong. <laughs> Everything is all right. A bug just touched me and I wasn't prepared for it. A bug. Yes. I'm only prepared for the Jenna bug to touch me unannounced. The wild <laughs> bug is, is very scary. You're, you're not, fine, not fond of the wheel bugs. I'm fond of them. I just, I'm just not ready to be touched by their little legs. Right. I'm adding just more color to my angle brush here. And I'm adding some depth as I'm painting. And that's not bad. You can see I'm adding some depth as I go here and building up, making sure it's sort of dark around these leaves. You can see how it just starts to create value. It has a bit of a streaky quality, and I don't want that to give you anxiety. Sometimes people get anxiety in the early stages of their paintings because they're like, um, it's a little streaky. I don't know what that means. It's totally okay. Because we have so many layers that it's just going to get richer and richer and richer. Um, oh, uh, the Zoom classes are like mini art retreats, says Jimbo for B. I'm so glad. That is literally what I hope for when we have our Zoom classes. If you don't know what I mean, um, if you're a patron and you can find out about that over on Patreon, um, I have classes where once a week I meet and we do Zoom over that software Zoom so I can see the students and we can see each other and we do weird projects and weird things together and have a lot of fun and there's a lot of social time because that's actually the priority of those classes. Like you paint with me on YouTube so I figure like you've got that but on top of painting with me then there's you get to talk to me at the end of the Zoom class and, um, and each other kind of like at the beginning and then there's a the middle part where I teach the class and then you talk with me at the end and then we just let you all socialize for a while and then the class that we did gets released to all the patrons uh anywhere between two days and a week after that let's go ahead and dry this okay because I think that'll give us the best results yeah and I will show you what we're gonna do next all right all right yay Yeah, this is doing. Yeah, she's. I was just reading up here. Thanks, guys, for all of the, all the emojis and the support and the cheering. It's it's really nice. Cinnamon can see all that, and it's. Uh, you know, we've been here for you know about an hour now, so this has gone pretty well. We've gotten a big chunk of this one done, and uh, I know that you guys have also been commenting that you like us to break these up so that you guys would have a chance to do a little bit, and then watch it, and then get it done, and then catch up on the next one. And uh, so that, that might give everybody a chance to do these in, in pieces as well. Something that uh, I think will, will help all of us. Yeah, I'm just looking over here seeing everybody in chat. It's really wonderful to see everybody. And uh, yeah, if you, if you have a chance, join us. Uh, if, if you're a patron, um, please join us in our patron zooms. If you are interested in being a patron, you can jump over to our, our to our website, theartshipper.com and click on patron and find out all about it. Um, it, uh, we also have a e-commerce store. We sell stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If, you, if you'd like to get some of this satin glazing liquid or this really cool brush mm -hmm. and you live in, uh, I wish it was everywhere. Unfortunately, it's the United States. But honestly, the last time I tried to ship anything out of out of the United States, it was just hundreds of dollars. It was just crazy. I don't know what's going on, huh? Silly. It was. It was silly yeah, money. Yeah, it was. It's it's become. You have to question like, are are they having to like, 
make a wormhole to get there? Is there some new form of transportation that's super expensive? Is this like Dune? They've got to make a deal with the guild to like fold space and arrive in the UK. I don't know what's going on, but it was really incredibly pricey. So we haven't really figured out how to do that. That was part of why we were wanting to come to Ireland was to be able to open up and expand the business. Um, but if you're here, you can get this stuff with us. And if you're doing the oil pastels, I got that really cool fancy paper I showed you. So if you're having any trouble finding it, I got it. Took a second. Oh, we want to thank you, Donna. Oh, d thank you so much, Deborah. I really you. appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, all all of the people who've been supporting us here, and, and we just all your likes, your comments, subscribes, the shares, the little Earthling doolars, they are so useful to keep the electricities on. Because this is Ann Arbor, and they're not kidding about the rent. <laughs> 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 you you pay for paradise. You do. You do. But it's been good. Like I take walks now. <laughs> I take walks now. Ann Arbor, the... I'm going to tell you guys the colors I'm putting in. I'm just putting them out real quick. This is going to look like black, but it's not. It's going to be dioxazine purple. And I just wanted to leave a little room to put out some cad yellow and cad red, maybe. But probably just cad yellow for right now. Because I think the magenta will be a better um, kind of underpainting for me to worry about. Now I'm going to look at my angle brushes and see what size of angle brush I want. And I think I'm going to want a half inch angle brush. It's a half inch angle. I may get into the bigger, but I think I'm going to do a half inch angle. This is the Princeton uh, Catalyst line. Um, and they uh, make a good stiff brush for acrylic. I like them. I like Raphael. I look like Raphael Textura and Sepia and uh, D'Artney. So there's some brushes I have and I have all those as well. Same as plug, I guess. Wait, oh, I should do this. This video was sponsored by you for your likes and comments and subscribes and your awesomeness for being here. Thank you so much. Um, woo. I just, just, you know, I'm not sponsored by these products. All right, have we put up a step? I will get you the next step now. The I will take it. Six step. Six step. I'm going to get a little bit of my glazing medium on my brush. I'm going to go ahead and grab some of my magenta and a little bit of my yellow. And I'm going to go ahead and just glaze my whole apple this color. Isn't that nice? Mm. If you've never done a blocking instep on a still life, you haven't really lived. No, of course you've really no. lived. If you had previously purchased gloss glazing liquid, would that be okay instead That of is okay for you because you're not live on YouTube. See, the we... only thing wrong with gloss glazing yeah. liquid is these cameras can't see around it. It's like a shield. It makes glare. So much glare. It makes it glary. Right, which just is really wonderful because you know how you get a rock wet and the colors look richer and better? That's what it does on your canvas. But a wet rock to cameras is just a rock it's they don't see well. It's shiny and reflective and... A little bit of cad yellow and quinacridone here and glazing liquid. That's all we're doing. Now, that's an interesting question. Elizabeth, Elizabeth was, was curious. Mm. How long do your Zoom patron classes last? Right now, um, if I, I had a medical incident recently and it's changed how I'm able to paint. So I'm kind of like right around an hour, hour, 20 minutes. Um, and Zoom seems to be holding there. Well, that's, that's but just the it, That's portion. just the part where I yeah. teach. There's 15 minutes, everybody says hello. And At then least. there's an art game that we play for like another like 30 minutes. And then I teach for about an hour. And then everybody hangs out in the room and visits for hours after. Until, like, yeah. Until everybody's just tired of it. Yeah. And sometimes it's like, you know, we just, we... Sometimes folks are like, yeah, you know, it's uh, everyone's going to go. But like sometimes they're like, we have folks from Scotland and Swiss, uh, Sweden and Norway and Australia. And so we tend to get. Um, we normally do them on Sundays, but we do occasional ones on different days in case yep. there's a scheduling conflict. And so we, we get a lot of our friends from all over the world to show up. And so time becomes somewhat irrelevant in, it really in, does. In, in, Amy <laughs> Ovard says, feeling blessed with cinnamon on her journey to a healthier painting day celebrating you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Yeah, if, if you didn't know, it's actually, I haven't been able to paint for a minute. 
And um, so this is me coming back to doing that again. And how instead of, I used to do like three hour, four hour lives, like powered through, you can find them. They're like crazy. But right now I find I can't do that anymore. I will be able to do it again soon. I just can't right now. And so this is my pivot on that, which is like, okay, I'm good for about an hour. I'll just break down these classes into steps. And all that will happen is you guys will have more chances to paint with me, catch up, and it will probably give you a better painting at the end anyways. So I'm actually pretty happy with the, with the pivot. I'm going to take a little bit of my quinacridone and my dot ox purple together. And I'm going to mix them and get just a little bit of my glazing liquid in and I'm going to come at the bottom of my apple just a little bit kind of darken this up some see how i'm doing mm -hmm. this will just make things nicer for later and we'll be glad we did it i'm gonna be doing this in much more earnest on thursday on thursday what we're going to do is we're going to come together and we're going to start adding the value the lights and darks and colors of this that start to shape the world create that bokeh background create some wood texture kind of really start to pull it all together and that'll be like at the two hoop painting level um and honestly all of this will be much easier this might be like if you've been having trouble getting to that three hoop place this may be a nice bridge painting for you because by breaking it up into these segments it won't be so much to take in all at once sometimes that's really what's hard is is this just a lot to take in all at once i'm up here at the top and i'm just brushing down a little bit of this color notice that my brush strokes curve on the apple with the shape of it so when i'm coming over this is a trick to round things when I'm on the right side, my brush strokes curve to the right. As I move to the middle, they become straighter. And as I go to the left, they begin to curve to the left. And that's a little something that can help inform the shape of an object on the painting. Just a little tip to make your life a little bit easier. I'm just rinsing out. Uh, Marty says that the side view is looking a little blown out. Uh, and uh an hour and a half is good says t rose lover yeah i think there's there is some marathoning that i do because i had stamina and i've been doing it for 10 years and i can make two three four paintings in a day um i can't right now but i used to be able to and so i actually think some of these classes broken up into segments one of my most successful classes that i i here's how i rate success not views though i like views because it gets me to meet new students but the one I think did really well is I did a still life over the course of a week, a really ornate still life. But we only met for like every day a little bit. And it was so successful in that the students had paintings that they were proud of. That's when I feel I'm successful mm -hmm. is if you guys are like, oh, that was great. And I love the result. I'm like, that painting is a win. And if I see a lot of it coming up in group and people being like, I feel like I learned a lot and I'm really happy with my result. I'm like, that painting is a success. Um, and again, not that I'm anti-views. Yes, to the YouTube algorithm. Algorithm, don't be mean huh. to me because I said that. But I do think it's it's a bigger deal for me probably that, that um, you guys have a good painting experience. Now I'm going to come here and I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my green again. And this time I'm going to grab a little cad yellow, a little more burnt sienna. I'm going to make kind of a green gold. So it's like the colors elsewhere, but just a little more green gold. Yeah. And I'm going to come in and just paint these leaves a little bit. Maybe a little more yellow in it. And this side angle is a good example of where the wet paint will shine a little bit more. That's why you see all those little, what look like little white, shiny, reflective dots on that side view. But there's no white dots. But they, over the overhead, they go away. It's just how the reflection. So that's the, that's the, the only reason. Both the matte and the mm -hmm. satin and the gloss are all good mm -hmm. in this line. So this, yeah, this is an underpainting blocked in. This is how you do that. This is also uh, the key to doing a street scene. If you're ever like, how do I do one of the street scene paintings? 
this technique. It's how you retain the architecture while adding the details. I feel like I really want to paint a French street scene. That's what you do. Oh, thank you, Ramona. Uh, you all rock and I'm blessed to have found a wonderful teacher, stun hands and painting friends and healing and blessings to all. Oh, thank you. I, I want you guys to know every day I'm doing like better. Like I see improvements and I'm just taking it stages, stages, stages at a time. Mm -hmm. And I just I know we'll be there probably by the end of April we'll be there. There we go. Isn't that looking good? Now we got some leaves and we can tell our green leaves from our green background. That's what we're going for. You're on a roll today. I am. Let's call this a step and then we'll glaze in the grapes. All right. Glazing the grapes on step seven is going to be heaven because we're glazing the grapes. Now the grape glaze, I just really wanted to say that. The grape glaze is going to be dioxazine purple and quin magenta and my glazing liquid. And we're just going to glaze them all in with this wonderful color. Now I will come back and piece back out some of these grapes with green to make uh, some detail stuff, but we're going to do that in the next class. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about it. You're just going to glaze them all the purple. The glazing should allow you to see your paint lines, by the way, so that they're not lost in the painting surface. When we want to do the green, we'll go back and kind of do some of them back in, pieced out with a little bit of white, and then put the green back in. And I'm going to let the purple go right up to the apple. And the reason for that is, is that I can come back and put in a little bit of light, but I also may want to keep a little bit of shadow. Now this product is sold internationally. Golden Golden does the um internationally. Ah, uh, they do the big trade show that's in Frankfurt. And uh they have lots and lots of distributors, but I can tell you I I know for sure Jackson's uh carries their products mm -hmm. and has good pricing on them and ships globally. You know, so you can get it in different countries over there. And if you have an art store where you're at that you know carries Golden Artist Colors, you can shout out your local... Even though we have an e-commerce store, you're welcome to shout out your local art store. Because I recognize... We like local art stores. We still like... Yeah, we still like a local they're, art stores. They're the source of a lot of, like, connection with your friends, and you can go and hang out, and we love to support them. And there's just a knowledge base at your local art store. It's a weird knowledge base, but it's definitely there make art friends they're art friends and art friends are good friends all right look at that we literally blocked in a painting yeah you did blocked in the whole thing now what does this do for us when we come back next time this underpainting or this blocking in will give us if you've ever noticed a still life um from any of like i'm not comparing myself to a dutch master but if you think of those still lives we're going to think of those still lives <laughs> recognizing we don't have to be that draw we're going to think draw. about it right yeah. there's a depth and gem of color where the grapes just feel so gemmy and so real you can pluck them and the apple feels so fresh you just want to take a bite that's really one of the things that you want to have in a still life is you want to feel like it's so real that it's coming off the wall into your home.
And this is, I, and I've done enough of these, and I'm telling you, I used to have to do these all the time. This is the technique that sets you up for that gemmy, rich, lush success. So when we come back next week, um, you'll want to just have an apple that is a zone and your grapes that are zone. You can kind of see the lines. Your leaves should be somewhat there and you've got a little bit of darkness up here and your tabletop is a little bit lighter on the top and darker on the side. It's not too much to take in. Then when we start to come through with techniques and individually paint these objects in a more considered way, this underlayment, this architecture sets us up for success. It's really weird how it does it, but it really does it. Um, I love... I love when I do immediate painting or I'll prime a wet into wet. It's super fun. But sometimes when you're new to painting, that's a pretty big leap. That's a pretty big chasm to jump. And this one is one you're like, you can do even when you're new. You're just a product away from having a good, successful time with it. Did I miss any questions? Because I catch a couple before My we go gosh, out. I think, uh, oh, do you want to just talk about when and where the retreat is? I don't have that memorized, but it's in Ann Arbor. Do you know the dates? Can we throw I up the uh, dates? Let's see. Let me find the dates here real quick. Yeah, John, I'm going to find the dates for you. We should have that memorized, but we're terrible salespeople. We are. <laughs> we and are so, not good at it. We could not work at a car have, dealership. We, we My mom events. teased me all so the time. July, uh, uh, July 15th through the 19th. July 15th through the 19th. And we'll be doing it, and it's going to be in the Ann Arbor area. One of the things that we have going on here is there's a there's a big art event that's going to be going on. That we're going to be able to go to. They have a big, mm -hmm. giant uh, art and craft fair. And so part of this retreat will involve that wonderful excursion. We have an excursion and away mission. Uh, things we're bringing back. We're bringing back the Pajama Glamour. That's coming back, which is um, basically it's sort of like you, you get in your creatively appropriate, like creative fun evening wear and we have snacks and everything. And we have lots of weird little art stations with social tables. Um, my last art retreat, I had this experience where I met the most incredible group of women of my life. And we stayed up till three in the morning talking about everything everything that you would be afraid to talk about every life experience every female experience everything and it was uh, not to exclude men because the guy would have been you know totally welcome it was just that sort of connecting with other human beings and those friendships have really persisted yeah it's been and really nice it, it gave me my faith in humanity back and i i realized i came after this with john going like we have to make sure that everybody has that too that midnight magic circle kind of all getting together so the pajama glam is for that we have a uh, incredible guest teacher andrew cook uh, he volunteered to come down he's an expert on art materials and he's a cutie patootie I got to tell you, he's a cutie patootie, but he knows a lot about mm -hmm. every art material and art just in general. And then we have another wonderful volunteer teacher who's coming in, who's a Zen tangle master to give some Zenness to the tangles and some tang. I'm actually going to take that one with you. I'm going to be sitting down with you going, I'm going to make little squares. That looks super fun. He's going to come in and then I'm teaching several courses. Um, I've got some new stuff I'm doing this time that I've learned to do where we break it up into lessons. My whole thing is that you just feel caught. You know that feeling like when you're in a painting and it starts to not go how you, I don't want to tear up. Do you know how it starts to go how you don't expect? Yeah. And you get a little freaked out. One of the things I think that we do really well at the art retreat is we catch people in that moment and we support them and build them up and support them up through it so that they can overcome that anxiety space. And uh, I, there's only a couple of tickets left, but it really is a magic, magic thing if you're, if you're able to go. And we are going to try to do smaller events on tour um, as my health allows. Yep. So... That's where I'm at. I definitely feel like I'm at the end of my... Yeah, I think we're okay. My little brain tokens. This is a good painting session yeah, for me. It was. It was I very think nice. we did good work. We're going to meet again at the same bad time Thursday at 1 p.m. 
live. This will be available for replay. You can slow me down. You can go over again. You can look at the tools. You can ask questions in the comments. And I think that this will give you a more relaxed painting session on each painting session where you don't feel like, man, we're just like, we're just walking up the hill, aren't we? We're just going to, we're just going to be a 10 mile hike. Is it okay? Here we go. This is going to be more like, um, there used to be this thing in horseback riding. They were called poker rides where you went a little bit of distance and they gave you a card and you went a little bit of distance and you ended up playing poker and riding and having snacks. And it was just the chillest horseback ride huh. ever on the planet. It's going to be a little bit more like that where we go a little bit and we have a chill little moment and we have successes. And at the end we get a better painting than we expected to get. So I want you guys to um, definitely, no matter where your painting is at, all you've got to do is get your grapes purple and your apple color and your leaves of color and your background of color and your top and your side, right? And using the traceable in, we come back, we're going to start to pull it all together into something that feels more like a still life painting that you're hoping to hang on the wall. I want you to be good to yourself. I want you to be good to each other. And I will see you at an easel next Thursday. Bye-bye.